Shamai, how to read music, bass clef. So I'm doing a small set of very, very basic theory lessons. Um, as a classroom music teacher, this is how I teach theory and how to read music in school. As an instrumental teacher, um, I actually teach reading music slightly different. I do teach all my pupils this way, but when it comes to actually learning instruments, you tend to focus on particular notes uh, a little bit slower. So I'm going to do a small series of these to help you so that when I come to do ukulele and bass ukulele, how to read music, hopefully these will have helped. And of course, this will help you read bass clef on any instrument. Okay, this is basic music theory. So when you're reading music, there is really only two things you need to know. What note you're playing, and that will depend where it sits on this, and how long you play that note for, and that is what the note looks like. Okay, and that gives you the note value. So what I'm going to do today is go over where the notes are in the bass clef. So first of all, what are these five lines? Because they are the actual basis of reading notation. This is called the stave. Can sometimes be called the staff. All right, but that's the stave and it's just five lines on a page. Now, depends what the clef is. What's a clef? That is your bass clef. It's a lot easier to draw than a treble clef. Okay, you start on the one, two, three, fourth line up. Okay, and you sort of go around like, it's almost like a backward C and then you put the two little dots in. Those dots are important. Now, it starts one, two, three, fourth line up, which is an F note. We'll talk about that in a minute, but the bass clef can sometimes be called the F clef. So the bass clef. Now, the stave is the same as a treble clef, okay? You put notes on it in the spaces and on the lines. However, those notes are named differently in the bass clef. Let's take a look at the notes in the spaces to start. A, C, E and G. They don't spell a word. So again, we're back to the acronyms. Um, the one that I was taught many years ago all cows eat grass. It just works. All cows eat grass. All cars eat gas. I know that's a favorite in America, but obviously um, our cars have petrol. All right, so all cows eat grass. Little bit like the treble clef. Have a go of coming up with your own. You've only got to come up with words that start with those notes, A, C, E, and G. Okay, but it will help you remember. Notes on the lines. I try and stay away from similar words to the ones in treble clef, the ones I won't mention now because I don't want to confuse you, but G, B, D, F, and A. Green buses drive fast always. Um, good burgers deserve fries always. Greedy bears dig for ants, okay? Again, try and come up with your own words. You are, you can see a list of different ones for bass clef, all right? Um, but they do work. I know you think, oh, that's, that's how I learned a long time ago. There's a reason these work and people do remember them. So let's put all the notes in, the notes on the lines, the notes on the spaces, 
Okay, and if I write the actual notes in, so we can start to see the beginning of an alphabet again. G, what comes after G in music? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, and so on. It's logical. If you can count to four and you know your alphabet, you can learn to read music pretty quickly. So let's put all the notes now onto our bass clef. Okay, so those are the notes on the actual stave. But we're not just confined to those notes. If we go up, if I add another line, and that's a ledger line, okay? A, B, what comes after B in music? C. Okay, it's, it's logical. It's letters and numbers, and that's it. Okay, let's go back down the other end now. So below the stave, a ledger line. What comes before F? That would be an E. And what comes before an E? That would be a D. Now, the main reason I wanted to do this was this end one. Middle, C. All right. Again, I mentioned this in the treble clef video. If you're playing the piano, all right, you're sitting in front of the instrument and there is a C on the piano, pretty much in the middle of it, called the middle C. And it's mirrored in our clefs. On the treble clef, you can see a ledger line below the stave, that's called middle C. But on our bass clef, we've got a ledger line above, okay, and that's our middle C. And of course, we've got our grand stave or our grand staff, which shows both our bass clef and our treble clef notes. And that is what you would read if you were playing the piano. You can keep going lower and lower and lower, and there you are. You can actually see some more ledger lines there, all right? Now, say, just for example, you're playing violin and you're learning treble clef, you've got note at the bottom, bottom G, okay? And so you've got to read a couple of ledger lines and that's pretty much it. With the bass clef, okay, there is something different in that, say now I was playing the cello, I could go and play notes much, much higher than that middle C. Now you can get to the point, there you can see it there, where you can actually have so many ledger lines, it becomes really difficult to read. Now in that case, all that would happen is whilst you're playing that instrument, you'd swap into treble clef. All right, you wouldn't remain in bass clef, swap into treble clef, and it would just be written on the music, the clefts would change, and suddenly you don't have all those ledger lines to read. As I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, I teach music in different ways, okay? If I'm teaching a class, I would use this method where we'd look at the stave and explain what clefts are and put the notes in, and we'd come up with acronyms to remember the names of the notes. If I'm teaching it to an instrumental player, I do it slightly differently. Now, the reason I do it differently is if somebody's playing a musical instrument, they're thinking about a lot of things. They might be thinking about where they're putting their fingers or what string they're playing or what notes they're pressing down on a brass instrument, okay? Now, in that case, we tend to only learn a couple of notes at a time. So if, just as an example, if I'm teaching bass clef, the way I've always taught this, and it does work, mid -d 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 -d, okay? So if I'm teaching, for example, bass ukulele, um, that would be your open D string, all right? What note comes directly above D? A, B, C, D, E. What note would become directly above E? D, E, F. 
So that's what I mean when I say I, I teach reading music slightly differently depending who I'm teaching it to. And the very last thing I'm going to mention about bass clef, um, again, I don't want to fry your brains with this, but it is important. Um, some instruments transpose. If I was playing a D, that D on a cello, it would sound open D string. If I play that D on a bass guitar, it's an open D string, but it sounds an octave lower than a cello, all right? So I should write it out lower, but we don't. That's not how we do it. It's just for you to be aware. When somebody says, oh, it's, if, if that's a D you're playing, that's a D that sounds. Some instruments automatically transpose. You're not doing anything, you're just playing it on the instrument, but it sounds an octave lower. I'm trying to keep these really simple. This is how I would teach it to a class in school, okay? So in this little series, we've got bass clef, we've got treble clef, and we've got note values, all right? They're very, very basic, but it is worth you checking them out if you're starting to learn how to read music. I do hope you found this video helpful. Um, please feel free, leave a comment or a question below, especially if you'd like me to do more music theory lessons. I've got the whiteboard now. Um, give us a like if you've enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Thank you for watching.